during this course. Logged in, filled out my exams, did my papers, while surfing. I could have never done that if I would have had to do that offline. That's what makes it so convenient. I'm gonna talk about what's missing a bit on the online stuff. If you have studied offline, then think back of those years. Think back of all the people you met. Think back of the crazy parties you had, the sleepless nights crashing at someone else's place. Maybe your first night with a girl, the first night with a guy. That's something you'll never have in online study. For me, I'm still in touch, and I mean really in touch, with many of the students I studied with when I was in the US, in Nashville, or for many, many of my students, we're still connected on Facebook, on LinkedIn, that I studied medicine with and graduated together from Innsbruck. Think about yourself. If you have ever studied online, how many people have you met in your online studies that you are still in touch with? Me? Zero. I probably don't even, I couldn't even tell you one person that I have studied with. I couldn't even tell you a name. Ask me about offline studies, I probably could tell you over 100 people. Now, what does this mean? Does it mean that you learn to study? Or are you studying to learn? Sounds really smart, but what does it actually mean? Well, it's very simple. If we ask graduates and ask yourself, what did you take away from a course? What did you take away from university? What did you take away from an online, offline university? What did you take away? Was it the memories, the relationships? Was it the business networking? Was it the little fights you had with other students? Was it that you had to get stronger yourself? Tell your story. When I was in Innsbruck studying, we were 600 students in the same year. Problem was, only 250 of us could pass the year. That's a number regulation there. So I got up every morning, 5 a.m., 5 a.m., to be in the university classroom that would start at 8 a.m. Why? Because I knew that there are 600 students in there and I have to be one of them that's gonna pass the next year. Many of the others didn't do that, I did. I was extremely committed, and so were 200 others. Well, guess what, who passed? Us, the people who were committed. You know how many uh, people I was working with in the hospital that came from other universities, other countries, that didn't have this challenge when they were studying, that they had to get up three hours before. They were complaining about long hours. I would never complain about long hours. I had to work 80 hours a week. I don't complain about it. It was the reason why I didn't want to continue, but it, I'm not complaining about it. Why? Because I was used to this when I, got, when I had to study. Now you see, when I did my online studies, I studied when I wanted to. No one pushed me to something. I went at my speed. I did everything myself. I didn't grind. Do you know the word grinding? You just heard it from the speaker before. Grinding, right? That's what it takes in life, to grind. And so when we look, what is it that you really need looking back? Is it the degree? Is it the knowledge that you get? Ask any student. What they really need is the connections, the relationships, you know, it's me today, if I, have any, if I would still be in the medical field, I could call any of my colleagues that are in 50 different fields. I was a surgeon. I need a dermatologist. Well, I know over two people, at least two people, that I'm really close with that are great dermatologists. I would need someone who is cancer. Great, I know the specialist for cancer, all types of cancers. Why? Because I've studied with over a thousand different people, and all of them are in this field today. In medicine, this is one field, but just imagine in business. Do you know why so many people succeed when they go to Harvard, when they go to Stanford, when they go to these elite universities? Of course, these universities have great programs. 
but it's the relationships, the connections that count afterwards. So what does this all mean? If we look at just education, online studying gets its job done. You get your degree, and it counts the same as if you would have done it offline. You get the knowledge, sometimes even a lot better because you can study more efficient. But here's my question. Are you learning just to study? Or are you going to university to actually learn something, to succeed in life? And they have done hundreds of tests. The tests have been done on grades. Tests have been done on spelling bee exams. Who has been doing better in spelling bees in the US? Who has the higher IQ? Do you think any of those factors were decisive of how successful people would be afterwards in their life? Let's say it like this, they're extremely important. If you have a certain level of IQ, chances that you're gonna succeed are of course higher than someone who has half your IQ. If you are not good at spelling, chances are you're gonna struggle a bit afterwards. Doesn't mean that you have, but chances are. But it also doesn't mean that just because you have an IQ of 180, that you're definitely gonna be a multimillionaire and you're gonna change the world. Definitely not. So, are you going to university just to study? Or do you want to really wanna learn something? So what are the factors that bring success? Well, there's a really great author, and uh, he wrote four really great books. I just want to talk about two of them, and you should definitely read them if you can. The author is called Malcolm Gladwell, best-selling author, amazing. And uh, I want to talk about two books he wrote. And he talks about, in The Outliers, which is the book on the left, this, he talks about the 10,000 hour rule. Anybody read that book? He talks about how important it is to practice, to train, to have experience, to have grit, to not giving up. That's just what we heard before. Now you see, I believe in online study, you don't properly get that. Because you're not in praxis. You're somewhere else, you're in a different reality. Me in Brazil studying business has nothing to do than with me sitting with a client, trying to pitch him my new idea, getting half a million investment from this person. Zero. Me studying online medical studies has nothing to do with me being a better surgeon. Zero. Because I need actually only 10% of what I studied. It gets this, the job done of me getting a degree and of me being eligible for certain work, nothing else. And he talks about that in David versus Goliath, Goliath, where he talks about how people, when they go to different types of schools, succeed, even though that's totally counterintuitive. How is it possible that someone with the same SAT scores, for those of you that don't know what SAT scores are, are scores in the US standardized testing, they're the same scores, one person goes to an elite university, Ivy League, and another one goes into a not Ivy League university. Common sense would say the person with the same IQ that goes into an Ivy League university is definitely gonna be more successful. But that's only the case if these people are elite, elite, elite. If these people fall into a range of 85 to 95 percent percentile, the person who doesn't go into an Ivy League university sometimes has higher chances of succeeding. Totally counterintuitive. This shows how important it is today, even though with all the online technologies we have, all the online testing, the convenience of chilling on your couch, in your PJs, and doing an exam. And he, in a great way, talks about this in David Weathers' Goliath. I have to speed up, obviously. The second really important factor is emotional quotient. 
And that has nothing to do with IQ, with your intelligence. That's how you are with people. It's the factor of grinding. And this is what's really important when you are in the classroom. Think about it. When was it that you really had to work with someone, work against someone? You practice this on a daily, on a daily habit when you sit with someone in the classroom. It's the second really important factor. Of course, there's the exception to the rule, the audit facts. Typical exception. Many times programmers, many times bloggers, many entrepreneurs, very great at autodidactic. They learn themselves. And I am in Hong Kong, a very close friend of mine. She's a very popular social blogger there. And she always tells me, social, uh, online education is gonna replace everything. Online education is gonna replace everything. She's a blogger. You know what she does once a year? She flies to an event where there's a thousand other bloggers. A thousand other people that do nothing else than say being alone and working alone on your computer is going to change the world without other social contact. Well, why are you meeting up with a thousand other people in a room and exchange ideas? It's because online can never replace offline. It's not going to happen. So what's my conclusion? My conclusion is the three fields of traditional studying, praxis, and online will be a side of each other. But I also believe that online is going to be more and more important. If we can compensate for the weaknesses, and this is where I come in, this is what I am doing at the moment. What we are doing is, we're trying to compensate for the online weaknesses. That you have to go on your own, that you have to drive yourself. So we have developed two apps. One is called Study Pact, one is called Rivet. And these apps allow you to basically compensate a little bit of what you do in the offline world and get this online. So what does this mean? It means you download them, we have them at the moment only for Android and Chrome extension. That's actually, Chrome is gonna be very important. You set the amount of time that you wanna study for study path, or for Rivet, the time that you wanna stay away from social media. You set your own stakes, and you, how, how much you, how many hours you wanna do, and how much money you would pay to the community if you failed to do so. Here comes the community factor now. People interact, they exchange ideas, they motivate each other, they talk to each other, they build relationships, and if you achieve your goal, you get a small benefit back. We have a platform where people can inter interchange, we have students using study -backed. And we have the productive people, the people who want to stay away from social media using Rivet. So that's what I've been working on, and that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm here in Singapore, because that way we have a programming team here that is in charge here. I have one last tip for you before I finish. I don't know if you've ever seen that YouTube video called Did You Know? If not, check it out. It's a four minute YouTube video. And what is in there is very interesting. It's gonna talk about a lot of very surprising facts. And one of those facts is, technical information is doubling every four years. So by 2018, the information we have today is close to being outdated. This also means the jobs we need in 2018 are not invented yet. So many of you are studying for things that in 2018 are not as relevant anymore as today. So with this, online learning will not be a revolution. Online learning will be an evolution. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please let me know.